about 18 months. Oh my gosh. I don't know if everyone remembers this from last year, but look how much the trunk has grown and you see how it stays low. It already made the first chunk of fruit has already been cut down, but it was over here. That fruit, um, it was, cut, it was cut in here, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, look at the trunk of this. Wow. You just want to hug it. <laughs> Whoa, I, I wasn't expecting how fat. So this was planted in the summer of 2019, about, about July. And um, at, from a three gallon pot. Wow. And it fruited within about 12, 13 months. That's pretty quick. And so we're now, we're about 18 months from planting, is that right? Pretty close. Pretty close. There's a video that we did that was uh And so I'm, I'm not sure how many of these fruits are actually gonna ripen because this one flowered in the in the winter and the fruit hung on and there's only a little bit of green leaves to feed it. So I don't have high hopes for this, but right. you can see these other two large trunks are putting out new leaves. So I'm sure they're gonna make um, good good clumps of fruit. So John, how, how cold hardy is this one? If you if you didn't have a you know a cold structure microclimate, because this looks like a really nice wind blocker spot the, where this is at. You can see what happened at the 27 we got here. Okay. 27 degrees was cold enough to freeze the leaf blade, but not the petiole of the leaf. Yes, yeah, that's a good thing. So it would have had to get colder than that to actually freeze this. Okay. And it's not that it's cold tolerant, it's just the thermal mass of it. How fat it is. The tissues never got below 32 or 31, which is the critical temperature. But in at my farm, it got about 20. Mm -hmm. And this variety, it did freeze the leaf petioles, the stem of the leaf, but it didn't freeze the trunk. That's good. So was it able to push back out the top? Yeah, they're pushing now. That is so good to hear. So, um, would you say it's similar to Orinoco cold tolerance, or it's just similar, because yeah. it's just because how thick they are? Similar, and and I think more important than the cold tolerance because the thermal mass effect. I mean, most of them are only cold hardy to 31 or something. You know, 32. Um, the thermal mass of any banana is going to keep the trunk from freezing and if it does freeze it's usually just this outer layer that freezes right. and it's okay on the inside but what what what's really critical is is the resistance to rot a cavendish type for me the trunks rot the leaves rot and it rots down to the bud it's very hard the fruit rots everything about it rots it's very sensitive and you have to, to and you have to cut it I, I can't get the fruits out of my farm. People in town get fruits where it's warmer, but I, I don't. But this type and the Orinoco and the Cardaba I like, um, they're very thick trunk and, and we say cold tolerant, but I think really what it is is they're resistant to rotting. That's good to know. But and this, the tissue's real thick. This one has really good quality fruit. And I like how it doesn't get super tall, so the wind's not gonna blow it off. So what if you had this in an open area in the full sun? Would it? It would probably be really damaged because depends depends on how cold. The bananas is. also can be in full sun. Oh yeah. And be fine, but then you have to worry about the wind in the winter time really affecting it. So it's probably best to plant stuff around your banana tree in the boundary. It'd, it'd be nice to put it in a sheltered spot where you had. Is this the north side right here, or this well, is the? So, uh, so you can see. If you stand here, you can see what's north and northwest of this one. Okay. Um, north and northwest are large trees and a, a nice evergreen hedge of citrus and pittosporum. And there's a pine directly north of it. But really, the cold wind comes from the northwest. And so this is actually a very sheltered spot from the cold wind. Okay. Because yeah, you notice, I noticed this last year, the, the trees were burnt from the north. Behind it, because I have them facing the south, but I now I've got to really put something behind it because I'm worried about the car cardaba. Because I have I had it on the tree line, but now the trees have been mainly removed. Cardaba is the toughest one. That's the toughest one. Yeah, when when 
when everything else freezes, the Cordoba seems to be fine. I don't remember the last. Yeah, it seemed pretty tough. It, it would have been the 2010 winter when it was single digits when the Cordoba trunks froze. Like a nor even the normal we get, like high teens, mm -hmm. normal lows we get, that doesn't seem to affect Cordoba. But a dwarf variety like this, um, this this one's a uh, dwarf Namwa. Namwa. I would. Um, not have bothered protecting this big one that was already fruiting. I probably would have cut it down and just called it the loss. But um, if you had a greenhouse over it, <clears throat> you could, like maybe the trampoline frame. Right, because it's not going to get no taller than this, right? Well, th this one's much larger because of how well nourished it is. Hmm. She Diane, has a lot of compost here. Diane has good soil. But um, you could wrap this with Christmas lights. Watch out, there's a little bud right there popping up. And I mean, a pup and just cut the leaves off, right. you know, and wrap it with Christmas lights and cloth. And just like the papaya, it's very easy to protect a banana trunk. I've seen bananas where they put fences around a dwarf banana like this, and it comes out about this far, mm -hmm. and they fill it with leaves up to about, you know, six feet high, and, cover, and then cut the tops off, and then put leaves on top of it, mm -hmm. and they cover the whole thing with a sheet of visqueen for like five months. In Kentucky or Ohio and they get bananas I guess you, know, you gotta think out of the box try to keep it fully alive because if not you're not gonna get any fruits so that, that's why I was saying you know saying before about you, you provide the conditions it needs right but um, in our climate well, it's very simple to protect them and also often not necessary you see the how the new leaves are coming I love it so you, even though this was colder than we're used to lately it's still very much an above average winter it's still pushing out making has bananas so uh, some folks around here don't like the the look of the banana when the leaves freeze so they they want to cut it down and there's kind of a tradition of cutting them down and you're cutting off the part of the tree that's that makes the fruit when you cut these mature stems down so if you leave the stem through the winter and actually protect it if necessary, the new leaves will grow out the top in the spring, and then the bananas will grow in the summer, and you'll get fruit. But it, if you cut it down, in our climate, it takes you know 18, 24 months, usually 18, to make the fruit. Um, if you're cutting it every 12, you're never allowing the pseudo stem to grow long enough to make the fruit. So. Right. So if you have the urge to cut it, call John and he'll convince you not to do it. If you don't want fruits, cut it. Just if, cut it. If you're tired of all these bananas, cut them down. If you're growing bananas, you ought to let them make the fruits for you. They're healthy for you. Thanks, John.